Welcome back to opening week of the Salem Phantoms franchise. We won our home opener and the season opener against the Pennsylvania Patriots last time out by a score of 8-1. to one. I went ahead and simulated to the first road game of the season against the World Series champions from last year, the Bronx Ballers. We've done pretty well in the simulation leading up to that point. We're 5-1. and one. Our one loss was a 2-1 to one score versus Pennsylvania with uh, Lou Reyes, our second starter, getting tagged with the loss. But he went six innings, gave up uh, looks like a couple of runs. Since then, we've won each of our games by scoring at least five runs or more. So things are looking pretty good. Derek Newsom, with a solid second start of the season, went six innings. Uh, we won that game 7-2. to two. Looking at the lineup, Ricky Taylor's struggling just a little bit with that average under 200, but McCall doing pretty well. Luis Campillo with an average of 522, and I mentioned last time he had probably some of the least pop in his bat. He already has two home runs for us so far this season. A lot of guys doing really well. Just uh, Taylor leading off, we could do a little bit more work with. I'm sure he'll shake off some of the rust. And in the pitching rotation, some solid work here by the bottom of our rotation. Johnny Cabrera in the five spot with eight innings pitched of scoreless ball so far. The other guys with an ERA right around three. We'll take that every time. Looking at the bullpen, some solid work here as well. Eric Romero with the highest ERA in the bullpen, but still major league average, about 4.1. Nicholas Lawson has yet to close out a game. Um, but we do have some solid work here by some of our setup guys, Owen Denson, with that showing on opening day. So let's go ahead and start our game versus the Bronx Ballers. Again, they are the current World Series champions, the defending champs. They are 4-3 and three so far this season. I went ahead and gave them Yankee Stadium, the throwback version, since uh, there's only so many game-created stadiums you can utilize without the Stadium Creator tool. Uh, thought it would be funny to kind of put them there. And here we go, game number two on stream that is, versus the Bronx Ballers. Sure to be a good matchup here, especially our first matchup on the road. You look there at the Bronx Baller uniforms, went for more of a uh, classic look uh, for a classic franchise playing in a classic stadium. And here we go, Ricky Taylor leading off. Oh, right back up the middle, it's gonna nail the pitcher and I don't think he's gonna beat this one out. So our bad luck with Taylor continues, that batting average drops into the 160s I would assume. Rip that one to start off though. And now it's up to Rich Cabrera to hopefully get us started here in the first inning. You can look there at the Phantoms Road Grays, pretty similar to the black uniforms as Cabrera hits that one high and deep into left center, but it's going to be caught. Not so much a power hitter, couldn't get it into the monument area. And now perhaps our best left-handed hitter, Ramon Cervantes, looking to maybe get a solo dinger. Oh, he went chasing, good slider there. Really tied me up inside. So nothing doing here in the first inning. So here is Lou Reyes again, pitched six innings, gave up two, only four hits and two walks, so his whip right around that one mark. I mean, that was a solid start. You could only do so much when the offense isn't really doing anything for you. And we get a look here at his pitching arsenal. We have a four seam fastball that tops out at 98, 90 mile an hour splitter. And then we got that 12, six curve and changeup combination as well. I'm gonna go for the uh, breaking pitch for our first strikeout attempt here. Does not fight, okay. See if we can get him with that high velocity splitter. And he goes fishing. Good strike out there by Reyes. This one's going to be a fly out to left. Ellis making his start for the uh, tired right fielder. Diamond fielder out there and right makes the play. And let's see if Reyes can get a 1 2 3 inning. I'm going to primarily rely on his fastball. He has good control with it. And that's another weak pop out to left field. So a scoreless first inning for both teams. No hits so far, we'll look to get the bats working here in the second. Here's Randall McBride, who's batting 316 so far, still only that one homer that we had on opening day so far. Muriel, the pitcher, has his primary pitch as a slider, and he's definitely been featuring it a lot more here in the first few batters of the game. That one was a changeup left up high, and McBride is all over that one. Going to reach the wall for a double, and a good leadoff hit here for the Phantoms. Might have something going here in the second. Be up to Cordova to at least advance the runner. Two and two count here with the quick counts. That's going to be a single into center field. I'm going to push McBride for that throw home since it's a soft liner. And he is going to get there just barely. Catcher was up the line, but right where McBride was running. And there's our first tally of the ball game. One to nothing on the RBI single. Now it's Campillo, the hottest hitter on the club. 522 average so far. Not really a power hitter, but definitely a pull hitter. So we want something on the inside part of the plate. That one was a slider, a nasty one. Quite a bit of break on the pitch, and that's a double play. Another grounder on a low pitch. That slider 
has been fooling me a bit. That time it was a fastball, but like just the illusion of a slider low in the zone has worked so far for the Bronx Ballers. And now Lou Reyes back to work in the second inning. Good placement up there high in the zone. May is able to foul it off. He has some great power versus right-handed hitters, but he was late on this one. Will he be late on that one? No, it's lofted into right field. Ellis at the wall. Going to catch it. That was a dangerous, dangerous opportunity there for the Bronx Ballers. We were able to just sneak it in side enough to... Well, actually, no. That didn't really catch much of the black now that I see it. Get a look at the wind here. Might have saved us on that deep fly ball. It's kind of pushing back to the left. So if the wind wasn't there, might have hooked it around that right field foul pole, if not for the wind. Two and two count now. It's an easy chopper to Cabrera and Reyes with a little bit of a scare there with the fly ball to right field, but has retired the first six batters that he's faced. We take a 1-0 lead into the third inning. Here's Ellis getting the start against the left-handed pitcher, but so far, home run. Three hits and 10 at-bats to this point in the season. Yeah, just really gotta be careful with that slider, although the fastball is a pretty speedy one, so that's a good combination there for the pitcher. That one again, a little bit off on the slider. Ellis is primarily a contact hitter, so maybe we can push something the other way on an outside slider. No, I still pulled that one. Oh, it nearly hit off the bag. Navarro at the ninth spot. Batting 222 so far. That was very high in the zone. Will it fall? No, the wind will push it to the right fielder. I definitely chased that fastball for out number two. And now Taylor, just looking for anything to fall his way. We had that liner that hit off the pitcher last time. Takes a fastball outside for strike number two. See if they go to the slider in again. Oh, a change up middle of the plate. I was a bit low on the PCI. That could have been a dangerous pitch, but instead it's a lazy fly to left. Nothing doing there in the third inning. Reyes, back to work. Leaves a fastball down the middle, but they're early on it. A couple pitches that have lived to see another day so far. Fastball inside, jams him. That's beyond the pitcher's mound, and Navarro, the second baseman, will be there. Four out, number one. Change up low in the zone, past the pitcher, past the second baseman. That's going to be the first hit of the game for the ballers. Got some speed to burn out there over at first base. He takes a leadoff step. We're going to throw, make sure he dives back. Once we get it to a two-strike count, I'm hoping to maybe chase low in the zone with the off-speed pitch. No, he's going to run again, this time without a leadoff, and he's in there. Stolen base for the ballers, and now they have a runner in scoring position for the first time this game. Looking to tie the ball game back up at one. Another one to Reyes. This one he knocks down. It's not going to get past him. So we prevented the runner from second from advancing, but another base hit here for the ballers. Now they have a couple guys on with one out. Back to the top of the order. Reyes versus Reyes. One and two count, though, for our pitcher, Lou Reyes. That's a 12-6 curve hung in the zone. It's going to be a chopper to short, just in time for the double play, exactly what we needed. Again, not the best placement on the, the pitch there, but does the job. Cabrera will lead off the fourth inning against Muriel, who uh, we haven't racked up the pitch count as much as we did in our first game. That one, he had like 80 pitches through three innings. This one, he's averaging, uh, I would say, about like 12 to 13 per inning to this point. Three and one count for Cabrera. Can he do anything with it? That one is a strike low in the zone. It was on the black. It was a 50-50 call. Maybe a bit low, but still a chance here for Cabrera on a full count. And that one's going to be lined back up the middle. Fastball on the outside part of the plate. Again, just really doing a great job with those outside pitches and hitting them the other way. Worked out well in our first matchup. And now we have the meat of the order coming up. Ramon Cervantes. 0 for 1 so far, but again, one of our best left-handed hitters on the roster. Or hitters against left-handed pitchers, I should say. 3 and 1 count to Cervantes. That's going to be a slider outside. A little bit of control issues here. A couple three ball counts for the ballers to this point. Now we have runners on first and second with nobody out. McBride, the cleanup hitter, with the full count. I was a bit off with that slider, not going to tag with the runner at second, so there's a waste of an out. I was thinking he's gonna backdoor that corner a bit, but it came a little bit more middle than I was anticipating. So there's a swing and a miss on the changeup. Another one high up in the zone, but I was not prepared for it. That one, meanwhile, is, oh, it's gonna be pushed foul. PCI again, slider, a little bit of break at the last second, and the wind pushed it out to the left. Ooh, good dot of a fastball. 
Was not expecting that one. Now it's up to Campillo. Again, one of our best hitters so far this season. Two straight outs, but we still have runners at first and second. A base hit should score the guy from second. Hitters count two and one. Have made the pitcher work a bit this inning. And that one's going to be another lazy fly to left. A lot of sliders that are kind of backdooring us, maybe trending a bit towards the middle. We just can't seem to get a handle on it so far with the PCI. Another scoreless inning here, one to nothing as we reach the bottom of the fourth. Number two hitter McMahon with a three and two count. Maybe just a challenge fastball here inside part of the plate. And got him looking. There we go. Just raise that eye level a bit, even though it's the computer, but sometimes it still works. Reyes gets his second strike out of the game. Ooh, that's a deep drive. I thought I was the center fielder. That's going to drop now because I stepped to the left with my left fielder. It's an automatic double as it bounces over the wall. I was hoping to uh, get Taylor there. I guess the wind's pushing it back to the left fielder, but Taylor has more speed out there in center field. And now it's the cleanup hitter, Ricky May. There's another one. Can the computer get there instead? Yes. <laughs> Literally the same situation, two batters in a row, but this time... Uh, the computer was able to get a handle on it. Now we'll see if we can strand a runner at second for the second straight inning. One and one count. Here's the pitch. That's a splitter that's going to catch the middle of the zone and is going to lead to a run for the ballers. We're tied at one. Base hit by the ballers will extend the inning. That one was uh, a little bit middle cut again. Now Reyes coming up on pitch number 61 here has had to work a bit during the last few innings, trying to get out of a jam, and goes to that fastball, batter is late, ends the inning tied at one. Took us a few innings to get our bats working last game, although we have the bottom of the order here. One and two count to more quality misses. We were gifted a few runs early in our last game, and then we started to get the bats working in the middle innings, as there is a good liner by more quality on that backdoor slider again. This time we're able to push it for a base hit, a single to lead off the fifth. See if I can actually catch him off guard here with the bunt. Oh, <laughs> I thought he was pitching out with the quick pitch. And I pulled it back. That was a center cut for a bunt situation. That one's going to find the right fielder's glove. Pulled that one a bit. A fastball right down the middle. And I missed it. Ballers with a left-handed reliever warming up in the bullpen. Some more lefties to worry about. So again, our team hits better against righties even though we're primarily a right-handed hitting team. That's a pop-out. Good two-seamer up and inside. Now Taylor at the top of the order. We'll see if he can get something started here. 80 pitches for the pitcher to this point. That's a fastball high in the zone, lined into the gap. It's not going to reach the wall, however, so the runner is going to have to hold up at third. But we have two runners in scoring position with two outs. A single here should give us a two-run lead. It is up to Rich Cabrera. It was one for two so far today. See if we can get another fastball or if he attacks us with that slider. Don't know why I took that pitch. High fastball in the zone. Right in his hot zone up here in the top half of the plates. Ooh, that nearly buckled me. I did the little mini check swing, but it's ruled a ball. Two and two to Cabrera. The next two, two. That one's going to be lined into left center and a double opportunity here. Scores the two runners. Great way to battle here and get that base hit to give us the lead. Three to one as Cabrera with the two RBI double, and they'll leave in their pitcher for one more opportunity against, again, our best left-handed hitter. Another fastball down the middle. Why do I keep taking those? Ooh, that was a terrible changeup to Chase. Gets me to end the inning, but we do take the lead. It's three to one. Let's get a look here at the, is this the strikeout or the double? Yes, Cabrera lines one for that two base hit. Scores two runs. Reyes back to work now with the lead. We'll see how much further he can go in this ball game as there's another fastball that hits down the middle of the plate, but Cordova's there in left field to make the play. Reyes went six innings, gave up two last time. I will take that performance again if he's able to have his stamina get him there. Let's go with the changeup. Haven't had too much success with it today. Oh, he chased it. I was well inside. I was aiming for the bottom part of the plate but a strikeout there for Reyes, his fourth of the game. Back to the top of the order. This one's another can of corn for Cordova out there, and that will end the fifth inning. A good, solid, quick inning of work for Lou Reyes. And through five, he's got the opportunity for the win. Phantoms up three to one. Ballers will bring in a right-handed pitcher. It's Jeff Calderon, 1-0 so far this season, but he'll face Randall McBride, who 
does exceptionally well against right-handed pitchers. Look at that, McBride, 87 power. Can he get into one here to lead off the inning? Not quite that one. PCI was a bit low again. Has fouled into the seats. A third straight pop-up. That one I don't even think I really moved the PCI. I was just trying to battle it off. And three straight pop-ups. Finally, one reaches the defense's club. It's out number one. Cordova takes a walk. Campillo up to the plate. 0 for 2 so far. Got another pitcher with a slider that he's attacking low in the zone, but he also has a changeup and a cutter, so chances are the pitch is going to break down to the right or just down in general. Fastball misses way inside. If it reaches a full count, I might think about running with the, the guy on first. Campillo gets into one. Does it have enough steam to get out of here? The wind's pushing it, and it's gone. There's that short left-fielded... Uh, porch, I guess, in the old Yankee Stadium. 378, though, would have likely been a home run in many ballparks with the wind. And we take a 5-1 to one lead. Campillo, been a home run hitter so far this season. It was a cutter low in the zone. It didn't break outside of the zone enough. And he's able to get some strength into it. Gives us two runs on the board here in the sixth. That'll mean Reyes can at least go one more inning without too much fear of uh, running into trouble as there's a strikeout. Good cutter that time. Here's Henry Ellis, first round pick in the 2036 draft. It is currently 2052. So this guy's been in professional baseball for quite some time. I chased that fastball low, and that'll end the sixth inning. Get a look at the home run by Campillo. Close up of that swing. Really went down for that one and got it. So a couple straight innings with two runs on the board gives us a 5-1 to one lead. Again, Reyes should be able to finish off this uh, sixth inning here before running out of energy. He actually has quite a bit left, even with the... 75th pitch coming up here. Navarro just out of his reach on that one. Runner is able to make it to first. Good quick uh, throw into first by the right fielder. There's another fastball top of the zone. Their second strikeout where they've gotten him looking at the top half of the zone. Might have even been the same guy now that I think about it. Reyes is going to put up a line similar to his last game. He had Two runs given up in six innings. Right now he's at one, but also had five strikeouts in that one, if I recall correctly. Now a full count to the four hitter. Don't want to give him too much inside. Going to try the splitter on the outside part of the plate so we can't pull it as far. He pushes it to left field. Not enough to get to the warning track or out of the ballpark. And that's a out number two to Cordova in left field. Now Reyes finally reaching the yellow threshold for energy. Just needs one more batter before we'll turn it over to the bullpen here. Full count offering is popped up behind first. Navarro should have that one to end the sixth. Indeed he does. And going into the late innings of this one, Phantoms hold a 5-1 to one lead. Going to give uh, Moreno a look here. He hasn't pitched so far this season from what I can tell. Ballers, meanwhile, bring in a left-handed pitcher to face the nine hole, Eric Navarro. Curveball in the dirt. So this guy's got fastball, curveball, splitter, changeups, a lot of low-breaking pitches. It's just varying speeds. He's also a sidearm pitcher. Full count, though, to Navarro. That one's going to be lined into left field. Dies just in front of the left fielder for a base hit. And now we've got a little bit of speed here in the nine hole on. See if uh, Taylor can maybe get something going here. One for three so far. And one of his uh, two outs was a screamer back up the middle that hit the pitcher. Two and two count. Good fastball on the inside part of the plate. That one I was looking to push, but I was early on the changeup. Oh, he beats it out at first. Okay, Taylor's speed coming into effect there. 96 speed, good stealing ability. We'll see if they pitch out here on the one and one count as the computer is prone to doing. Yes, I, I play too much franchise on quick counts. They always pitch out on one and one counts. Now Cabrera with one of the bigger hits in the ball game so far. Hitters count, I was late on the fastball. That's a easy pop out to the center fielder. It'll be up to Cervantes to keep the inning alive here. Ball in the gap, though, might score Taylor from first. It's a splitter. I was a little bit below it with that break, but it's going to find its way into center field for a hit. Now we have runners at first and second. Taylor can run out there at second as well. A single here by McBride might be able to score him from second. Perfect. Slap the other way, but it's going to find the right fielder. Before it gets to the fence, McBride doesn't have too much power against lefties. And there's the end of the seventh inning. So here's our first look at Danny Moreno. There's the stats from last year. Not great. A whip of about 1.5. ERA above 5. He's our lowest rated pitcher on the roster, but he can throw 99. Has a cutter. 
a slider that can go into the 90s as well. Splitter, I mean, all of his pitches can reach 90 if we really want to. But his first look of the season in game number seven, there's a fastball on the inside corner, good placement. Now we'll see if we can get him to chase with a slider outside. Too much break on that one, full count. Go with the cutter on the outside corner, perhaps. Grounded to Navarro, he's able to gather himself and throw to first for the first out of the inning. Despite his high velocity and low stamina, I have him as our long reliever, I'm not sure why. Probably because they put the lowest rated pitcher there, but good strikeout there by Moreno. Really ties him up inside on that one. Now a chance for the 1-2-3 inning. Not quite low enough in the zone, fouled away, but late on the 91 mile an hour splitter. Now we'll see if the fastball will get him again. Right on the top corner. Good inning here for Moreno. One, two, three. We go to the eighth. Five to one the score. Cordova with the two and two counts. Oh, he went around on the curveball. I tried to hold up in time. Not so. Strikeout by Stevenson. Here's Campillo, who with the home run earlier gave us a four-run lead. Oh, that one right down the middle over the third baseman's glove past the left fielder. Everything working to his advantage on that one. But it's going to stay at second with a stand-up double. Wow, that was a few inches away from being gloved over there at third as we get a look at the replay. And then past the left fielder. Look at that exit velo, 114. And that's for a guy who doesn't really have too much pop in the bats. He's been proving me wrong so far. Splitter, though, right down the middle. Stevenson, this will be pitch number 30, but he's got plenty of gas in the tank. Pushed the other way by Morcaldi, but unfortunately right at the second baseman, so no advance there for the runner, and no base hit either. It'll be up to the left-handed hitter, Henry Ellis, 0 for 3 so far. He's been facing a lot of lefties, which he kind of struggles against. Wow, they called that ball 4, curveball. Perfect placement in the top corner of the zone, but you don't get that call on curveballs very often in real life. And now a 3-2 and two count to Navarro, the 9 hitter. Runners will be going. And a grounder. I was off on the fastball. Whipped over to first for the final out of the inning, so nothing doing there for the Phantoms. They still hold a four-run lead. We'll go another inning with Moreno. He's had a, a lot of energy to burn so far, not having pitched so far this season. Backs up the hitter there. That one's roped into right center. Going to be gloved by Taylor, though, before it gets into extra base territory. A leadoff single for the Ballers. I do have a pitcher warming up in the bullpen as well, just in case things go south. It's a grounder to short, Marcaldi to second, back to first, double play. And now the ballers down to their final four outs. McMahon though, the two hole hitter, we'll see if he can get something going. Lofted into right field, Ellis not gonna get there, just a step or two in front of him. Now we have the three hole hitters coming up for the ballers, so they might be able to put some runs on the board with one swing. Gonna have to pitch very carefully on the outside part of the plates so they don't pull much. There's a good swing to miss. This guy, Rich uh, Delahante, the three hole hitter, has had a lot of trouble with those high pitches today. A couple strikeouts looking. That one chased out of the zone. Do we dare go inside with the cutter and see if we can tie him up? Oh, stone cold take there by Delahante on the cutter inside. Now we'll see if we can go back to that fastball on the outside part of the plate. That one's fouled away, so he's starting to get a gauge on it. Now we'll go to the splitter low in the zone. Cut on and missed, strike three, and that ends the eighth inning. We're one inning away from wrapping this one up here on the road, our first road game of the season. But first, we'll see if we can get some insurance runs with the top of the order, Ricky Taylor up to bat. One for four so far. Check my swing on the curveball, but it was a called strike. Cabrera up next, two for four today. Those breaking pitches low in the zone have just been getting me so far today. That one, check my swing in time. Full count to Cabrera. Fastball is left up high in the zone. Bit above the zone though, went reaching for it, and that's an out to the left fielder. Now here is Cervantes with two away, one and two count. Stevenson looking to wrap up his day. Soft liner got under it, and that's an out to the center fielder. We go to the bottom of the ninth. The ballers need four to send this one to extra innings, do up the four, five, and six hitters, and hopefully closing this one out is Oscar Estrada. Five innings of scoreless ball so far. Not too many hits given up. Six strikeouts and only one walk. Get a look there at his pitches. Fastball that tops out at 93. Changeup and slider. Also a two-seam fastball. That can reach about 90. 
good season so far. His first pitch on the one and two count is bounced to Navarro as it jams the batter inside. There's out number one. That one was a two seamer that didn't quite get onto the fists enough as I intended, but is also a quick out to the center fielder. And now the ballers are down to their final out of the game. It'll be Peter Wagner trying to keep things alive with the two and two count. Go for the change up outside for the win. Swing and a miss. Estrada closes this one out, and that's your ball game. Five to one Phantoms. Some good pitching showings so far too. Only two runs given up in the two games that I've happened to play. Ten hits for the Phantoms. No errors, some clean ball played by both sides, but we had a couple big hits. Two run homer and the two run double. That ultimately proved to be the difference in this one. Campillo is your player of the game. A home run, a double on that perfect, perfect liner down the left field line. A couple RBIs. That home run though really sealed the deal. Gave us a comfortable lead. We were able to ride that to the end. No score in the last three innings for either side. And that's how it ended up being five to one. We also get Reyes his first win of the season. He had two quality starts so far. First one resulted in a loss, second one, we got him the W. So there's game number two, hope you guys enjoyed. Next time out, we will be playing the Motor City Mustangs. As you can see on the calendar next week, they bounced us out of the playoffs so many times during the simulation, hoping to get some revenge on them. Until then, this is Kasabi. Thanks so much for watching the Salem Phantoms franchise. We will see you for the next episode.